All right. Well, good Saturday morning for everyone that is here live. Of course, it is morning on the West Coast, 9 a.m. If you are in California, it is 12 o'clock noontime if you're on the East Coast. It's 11 a.m. if you're in Chicago or Dallas. It is uh, 10 a.m. if you're hanging out in Denver. Uh, of course, it is now 5 p.m. in the U.K., 6 p.m. in Spain uh, or France. It's all based on what part of the world you're in. It happens to be 9 p.m. in India. Uh, that'll become more important in a few moments. You'll understand why. Uh, but anyway, I know that some of you are here live. Some of you are here on the replay. So uh, whether it's morning, noon, or night, uh, this is the one place you want to be every single week. Uh, every week we have our corporate update call on Monday with our CEO and founder. Uh, that is the most important call we do, uh, followed by this call. Uh, every single Saturday, uh, we have our ambassadors on here. Uh, we got Mr. Daryl Roberts on here all the time. He is the Michael Jordan uh, of our industry. Uh, one of the most phenomenal trainers you're ever going to meet. Uh, someone who's been in the space over 30 uh, plus years, a seven figure earner. Uh, today, we're going to have Mr. Ryan Vanderpool. Uh, we have Ambassador Deborah Taylor on here on a regular basis. We have Ambassador Danny Seguinal on here on a regular basis. Uh, I'm on here on a regular basis, right? So people that are uh, building massive teams in Trevorium are on here, uh, kind of, you know, pouring into you. Uh, here are the things that we have done uh, to have success. Here are the things we see happening and uh, sharing stories. And again, it's the repetition uh, of coming back again and again and again. I can tell you that the absolute thing that shaped uh, Daryl's career, uh, the thing that shaped my career, um, is that when I got started in this industry, man, I wanted to know everything about it. I wanted to read every book, listen to every audio, and I just didn't do it once. I mean, I had a pile of cassette tapes. Yeah, yes, cassette tapes. I'm dating myself, right? I had a pile of cassette tapes in the passenger seat. I mean, they were on the floor. Or they were on the seat. And I just listened to it over again and again and again and again and again and again until I could I could do the lines. I knew what was coming. I, I could do the punch line. I could do the uh, info, you know, the, the 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 way they would you know, announce the word or info the the the. the <laughs> How you want to say it? The enunciation of the word, the pronunciation of the word, the inflex, the how you kind of inflex or whatever. I'm losing the word for that. Anyway, so the the absolute way they would say it, I could do that so well. I knew what they were about to say, and I just listened to it over and over and over. And I still do. I still listen to podcasts when I'm on the treadmill. I'm still listening to something always, and it's an ongoing uh, process. That because understand that when you get out in the marketplace, there's a whole lot of negativity that you're going to bump into. Um, you know, when you get out in the marketplace, uh, most people are unfortunately negative. Uh, most people, unfortunately, watch the news. And if you watch the news, I'm going to encourage you to no longer watch the news. Trust me, if there's any real news, you will find out about it, right? I mean, if something big happens, you're going to hear about it because everybody's going to be talking about it. You did not have to watch the news to hear that Queen Elizabeth died. Everybody was talking about it, right? That's going to pop up on the front of your Google. You don't have to go sit and watch an hour long of the bad news. Because when you watch the news, it's not the news. It's the bad news. If you are in the news business, they have an expression. And the expression is that if it bleeds, it leads, right? I mean, so they themselves know. They're looking for the most horrendous things that happened that day because that's the thing that's going to get everyone to come watch the television. They're not going to run about the people that did all kinds of great things that day. They're not going to talk about all the people that started businesses that are flourishing or people that made contributions and built orphanages. They're not going to run about all the people that just did incredible things and that had that wonderful things happen to them. No, no. They want to run the stuff, you know, just like in Florida, the hurricane. You didn't have to watch the news to know that Florida got pounded by a hurricane. And they're down there every five minutes trying to show you somebody else's disaster. Sir, you've just lost your home, your business, your family. How do you feel? I mean... You don't need to watch hours of coverage of that. It's just negative, negative, negative. And trust me, garbage in, garbage out. That is true with the body. That is also true with the mind, right? Garbage in, garbage out. And you got to feed your mind the good stuff. Number one, you got to overcome uh, usually decades worth of negative programming. I mean, decades of being told, no, you can't, this, this, this. And a lot of us just trying to rewire your own mind for, yes, you can uh, incredible things can happen. You know, there's infinite possibilities and there are. Uh, learning to embrace capitalism, uh, learning to embrace opportunity. A lot of people weren't hardwired that way. You were taught, go to school, get a degree, get a job, right? Uh, you were taught that was going to you know, lead you to the promised land. And again, nothing wrong with school, nothing wrong with education, nothing wrong with a job, putting some food on the table, taking care of your family. 
but that is where you start. That is not where you want to finish. You have to keep reading the books where they say, by the way, you don't want to stay at a job. You want to graduate to a place where you have streams of income that are coming in that are no longer dependent upon your day-to-day -day efforts. By the way, that's not Todd Strand saying that. That's Warren Buffett, the fifth richest man in the world. He's worth about $100 billion. He self-made. He started investing in his lifetime. He did not inherit money. His father was not wealthy. In his lifetime, he started investing money, and he's so good at investing money, he took his account from zero to wherever that current number is, something close to $100 billion at the moment. Uh, so, you know, you might want to read his books. <laughs> you might want, man, maybe that guy knows something. And one of the things he will tell you, it's a famous quote. We've had it up here tons and tons of times. But that quote is, in fact, I'm going to pull it up here real quick. Uh, just so that everybody can see it. But that quote is, unless you find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until the day you die. I almost have it here. Give me one second. Here it is. So here we go. This is not the word according to Todd. This is the word according to Warren Buffett, right? If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until the day you die. Uh, again, Robert Kiyosaki, the financial guru of our era. Uh, he's wrote the, wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Wrote the book, Cashflow Quadrant. He will tell you the same thing. Tony Robbins, who does all of the different seminars. A lot of you heard of Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins. He will tell you the exact same thing. Uh, J. Paul Getty, one of the first billionaires, will tell you the exact same thing. Anybody that's got money will tell you the exact same thing. You can pull up statistics uh, on the global population, on the United States population. You can say, who makes money? Guess what? People who own their own business are the ones making all the money in our country. Um, in fact, in that stat from the cash flow quadrant, 95% um, of the people control 5% of the money. 5% of the people control 95% of the money. So which of those two categories do you think you might want to be in? Uh, I think I'd like to be in the 5% that control 95% of the money. Well, that's over here, the people who have jobs. Over here are the people who have businesses, Right. But again, you may have not been taught that. That's that you know kind of programming that you have to overcome. And the only way to do that is to obviously start listening to audios, listening to reading books, listening to podcasts, getting around people who are entrepreneurs, because as you hear them speak again and again and again, you will start to assimilate the way they think, right? You'll start to assimilate their thought processes, their uh, ways of looking at things. And understand that with every adversity with every negativity with every bad thing is a seed of equal and greater opportunity some people see disaster entrepreneurs see opportunity right i mean that's been how things have worked forever one man saw oh my gosh look at all this garbage and then waste management said hey what an opportunity we'll come by pick all that stuff up and a multi-billion dollar corporation has been formed so with everything it's that way but it's learning to think a certain way and the only thing you can do is you know obviously again program your mind and that's why it's so important to be here every single week. Now, that's a pretty long introduction uh, for me to introduce the two ambassadors we have with us today. Now, uh, that being uh, uh, Daryl Roberts, again, the Michael Jordan of our space. We got uh -huh. Mr. Ryan Vanderpool. Uh, these gentlemen are both seven-figure earners. Uh, Daryl's been in the space 30-plus years. His team's growing all over the world. Ryan has built teams of over 30,000 people. Uh, in fact, when I introduced him on Three Ways, I go, he's built a team of over 30,000 people. So he's starting to get good at this, right? He's just, he's starting to get good at this, right? Uh, just beginning. So, but Ryan's still listening to audios. He's still reading books. He's still trying to perfect his craft. He's still trying to catch his own negative thought process. So if guys that have made seven figures are working hard on this stuff, then obviously you should be working hard on this stuff. So with that, gentlemen, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. I thought you were about to do the good morning Vietnam with the way you said. I thought you were going there. Like you, you did the whole good morning. When I called well, Daryl, hey, when I did, did that, that you guys never morning. seen the movie. It's funny, the, the Robin Williams, but I did that to Daryl when I called him. Yeah, this morning. No, I always say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And it's so apropos here and applicable because we have people literally all over the country, all over the world watching, and some that actually watch the recording. But, but Todd, you're absolutely right, man. When you take a look at what we do and and, and how do you get in this space? Again, out of all the, the, the four or five companies, five companies, six companies I've been with over those 34 years, I mean, this, this has to be the easiest. And, and when I say that, I'm careful how I say that 
but it's because of what our actual service is. I mean, I know we're going to talk about uh, Cancun uh, from last weekend. I'm sure we're going to get into that a little bit. I'm sure we're going to maybe talk about Orlando. And uh, I know my our, our friends, uh, Jeff and Heather, uh, you know, we're going to talk, talk about them and, and where they just were. And matter of fact, we were actually talking in San Diego because uh, while they were there, we were there. We didn't get a chance to hook up. So that's the worst thing that's going to happen to you in our in our business while you're reading a book, while you're listening to a cassette tape, while you're trying to figure out what are the simple things that I need to do every day to repeat to get better at what I'm doing. You're going to be traveling, could be locally, could be nationally, could be internationally. And, and that's what's so amazing about this company. That's our service is having a great time. And we just got to learn how to get better sharing that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. Yeah. And speaking of our service, by the way, I have this flyer up and I'll take it down here in two seconds. But uh, for those of you who don't know, Trevorium is growing globally. And these are some of the brand new markets that we just opened up. Zambia, uh, Zambia, Tanzania, Kenya, Kazakhstan, and India. And I'll give you guys a little trivia. Uh, what is the largest English speaking country in the world? Again, what is the largest English speaking country in the world. And a lot of people say the United States. No, India. Uh, they speak English in India, and there's over a billion people in India. Over a billion. And there's only 300 million in the United States. Over a billion people in India. That is a brand new marketplace that we've just opened up. And you may not know anyone in India today. Uh, guys, I never sponsored one single person outside of the United States. My wife has never sponsored one person outside of the United States. Daryl and Maria, uh, they did. They, well, that's not true. I sponsored Renita Lowry in Canada and you guys sponsored Danny in uh, Canada as well, right? So, okay, I, I stand correct. I, I had to duplicate I, you. Yeah, exactly. So we both sponsored, yeah, yeah, yeah you outdid me there. <laughs> I love Renita, obviously. <laughs> uh, um, so we both sponsored one person outside the United States, but that was Canada, which is practically the United States, right? Yeah, so okay. uh, that's it. Outside of the one person Renita that I sponsored in Canada, and for Daryl and Marie outside of uh, Danny, uh, who they sponsored in Canada, uh, our team is all over the world, all over the world. And again, that's just because people know people, know people, know people. The same is true. So when you see these open markets, these brand new open markets, you may not know people there yet today, right? You may not have anyone there yet, right? But the word is yet. Eventually, your team can grow there. So I want you guys to be aware of that, that the uh, uh, brand new markets are opening up. Now, Kazakhstan... Uh, Ryan certainly does not know anybody in Kazakhstan, at least he didn't until now. Uh, yeah. Ryan's team is the one that's actually spread to Kazakhstan, and people from Kazakhstan are, are doing incredible things. Yana uh, went a uh, one-star director uh, her first month. They're going to be two-star in her second month. Uh, she was actually born and raised in Kazakhstan, uh, along with a number of other uh, people of uh, part of Ryan's team. But Ryan, did you know anybody in Kazakhstan before? <laughs> Couldn't speak Russian, still can't speak Russian. <laughs> Uh, we're doing uh, presentations in Russian. I don't even know what it says when I look on the screen, but I can tell you what, the people from those areas, the people that have either migrated here or whatever the case is, understand it and understand it enough that that group is absolutely exploding. And I, I got zero to do with it. I mean, I you know, other than, you know, helping you do a recorded webinar where we were fortunate enough to have a, uh, a little bit of help from our our, our dear dear friend uh, to put Tatiana the, translating us. Tatiana translating it. We put together one slideshow. Since then, translators and a slideshow have taken a team just absolutely going crazy. As a matter of fact, Tatiana is closing in on four star yeah, director. Far away, yeah. I mean, in her fourth a, month, four star. I mean, you know, we just were talking about her a couple of months ago. She goes one, she goes two, three weeks later, she goes three. Now she's bouncing on four and her team is now vying for, they all are going ambassador. They're all committing to, I'm going ambassador by the end of the year. So crazy stuff. But it's funny, Todd, because I'm writing notes already. Up comes the book, right? We're writing yeah. the notes and what you guys are saying and it's an old saying, it's not who you know, but who they know. And it's always come down to that in this industry. Back to both of you guys. You knew one person outside of the United States who decided to join 
And I don't even know what the teams are for you, Daryl. I don't know what the French team's all about now, France and how it's, um, yeah, Belgium. Can we, can we say Australia now as well? Is that fair to say? Oh, you just, you can say whatever you want to say. (laughs) (laughs) What's what's about to go down there is going to be crazy. Daryl, I'm, I'm seeing three, four star ambassadors. I'm seeing new ambassadors. The future is so bright. And once again, it comes back down. It's not to who, it's not who you know, but who they know. And when you start prejudging people, guess what? The story ends there. Just know whether someone says, I just want in for travel. I'll join because I'm your friend, but I'm never going to do anything. Don't ever, ever believe that one. We had someone a, a while back tell us, well, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Went on a trip, came back. Guess what? Sponsored someone within about three or four days. You know what I'm talking about, Todd. Yeah. So, I mean, the power of the event, whatever the event is, makes all the difference in the world. And I'm going to go back to what you said, Todd, and then we can get into facts, tell, story, sell, and things like that. But Todd, you're talking about read a good book every day. I'm going to tell everybody, just be as close as you can to Todd Strand, because he's one of the greatest books being written in the history, in the history of this industry, let alone the history of our company. And the more time you get on the phone with Todd, the more you hear the things that come out of his mouth. He's talking today about garbage and he's making garbage sound glamorous. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> if, you, if you own waste management, it's pretty glamorous. <laughs> garbage, right? Garbage sounding like glamorous. And he's right. It was. But it's the vision of being able to take things and looking at them a complete, completely different way. Stepping outside of the box and looking at it and saying, wow, there's potential here. And that's what we do in our business every day. Wow, there's potential with everybody. Love them, appreciate them, just get them the information. But guys, I don't know if you want to get into facts, tell story, sell, but we've seen story after story after story, especially over the last couple of weeks. Todd, we haven't even talked about the two other trips, let alone Cancun, the, the dozens and dozens and dozens of people that made the other trips as well. Maybe you share a little bit of that story real fast and let's get into that. Yeah, but in fact, I got to go backwards here for a moment because you're talking about, you mentioned Cancun. I just had the thought that exactly seven days ago today, we were sitting on the beach together. <laughs> Where are the pictures, my friend? I know, we were sitting on the beach together doing this training call, right? That was, no, get me wrong. It's fun being here now. It was a lot more fun being here last week, right? <laughs> I had the waitress. Hey, can I bring you a drink? Bring anything? You know? Yeah. Can you bring a little more coffee? I mean, it's like you're just sitting there on the beach watching the ocean. Daryl, by the way, when we did the training last week on Friday, and so guys, we're gonna have uh, world tours. There's gonna be a training every 90 days in the United States. There'll be training every 90 days in Europe. Uh, so every 90 days, there's gonna be a training you can tap into. So we're gonna talk about that in a moment. But when we did the training in Cancun, Daryl, you'll love it. It's the first training I ever did. Dave Hart too, Ryan too. We were there in shorts and flip-flops. It's the first oh. training I ever did in flip-flops. Yeah. And so we're doing the training and I kid you guys not, the waitresses kept walking in and bringing mimosas. They were delivering mimosas yeah. to the people that were at the training. I'm like, now, now we've got ourselves a travel training going on, right? In fact, I almost brought to the front of the room just a joke, Daryl. And, I, and Gina had it in her bag. I didn't do it. I was trying to be sensitive at the time, but uh, she had sunscreen. Uh, we had like the off, you know, for the, the bug spray. I had sunglasses, uh, you know, a hat. And I was going to talk about it. Okay, we're going to get into some advanced training. Uh, when you come to sunny beaches like this, it's always a good idea to have 50 blocks sunblock, okay? Um, you know, sunglasses are nice. It's good if you have a hat when you're in the pool, help protect your forehead, your head, right? Uh, and you might want to have a little off, carry that with you if you're in places where there might be some bugs. Now, when you go to the swim up bar, it's best to order a hot dog, okay, over the hamburger when you're at the swim up bar, only because it's faster to eat. Now, whether you do must, <laughs> I was just going to be funny, right? I mean, we're training people on how to have fun, right? I mean, it's like, that's how simple our business is. But uh, to go back to facts, tell stories. So um, let's know. talk about Nina here for a moment. Um, so Nina is somebody who got involved in our business. I miss Nina. We love you. Um, and Nina was some like, oh, guys, I don't know. Remember, we went and met her at the Chili's. You and I went and met her at the Chili's in Temecula. And yeah. we're like, you know, Nina, we can help you build, right? You know what I mean? And, you know, and we got a long history with Nina. And she says, okay, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get in. And so she gets in. And of course, you know, we start building. And next thing you know, her team starts growing. 
um, and she wants to go on a trip with us. And so she books this trip some time ago. Uh, we all go to Cancun together. Of course, Nina is going by herself. Well, the trip is actually for two people. It's all inclusive. All the food, all the booze covers two people. She brings with her her cousin, Ashley. And so Ashley, you know, comes. She does nothing about our company. She, I mean, she doesn't think about some travel club or making money. She's just like, hey, yeah, Cancun, sure, I'll come. And so she comes to the trip. She's obviously there. And she's just like, oh, my gosh. What'd you pay for this thing? $2.99. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> How do I get in this company? I mean, no one ever brought up anything about an opportunity. No one did a presentation. No one drew circles on the board. There were no fancy lines. It just invited someone on vacation. And we know, we all know in our company, this is the Mamuda principle. Love you, Miss Mamuda. Um, and so, you know, Mamuda is the first one that ever did that. She just took people on vacation with her. And that's how she got her three. And so I want you to think about this for a moment. If you never did anything other than invite people to go on vacation with you, you will get your three. It might take you one year, two years, three years, but you'll eventually, you will get your three people if all you ever did was take somebody on vacation <clears> with you. You don't have to sell them on anything. All they got to do is show up and trust me, they are in, which means if it took you, would say a year and a half to do this. And a year and a half, you've now got your three, which means in a year and a half, you've now got all of your travel points to cost you nothing. You're earning your points every single month and they cost you how much? Zero dollars and zero cents. And you can trade those points in for unbelievable vacations all over the world. You are now traveling virtually for free. And if that's all this ever was, pretend there was no one star. Pretend there was no two star, three star, four star ambassador. There was no Louis Vuitton shopping trips. There were no lifestyle bonuses and ambassador pools. There was no, I mean, none of that existed. This was simply an opportunity that if you take three people on vacation, you get vacations for free for life. And that's all that was. How many hundreds and hundreds of millions of people would do backflips just to have that? <laughs> and when you think about that for a moment, you begin to get an idea of like, wow, we're embarking upon something really big. We're doing something that's never been done. And it's simply showing people how they can earn their vacation. Because that's what you do when you tell three. When you tell three people you're earning your membership, you're earning your vacations. That's all you're doing. We're showing people how they can earn their vacation. And no one has ever done that before. And if you go out and ask anybody, if you had all the time, all the money in the world, what would you do? Travel. Ask mm. someone about their bucket list. It's travel, mm -hmm. travel, travel. How come you don't do these things? I mean, these are your dreams. How come you haven't gone? Well, I can't afford it. What if there was a company where you could join and you can not only travel for like half the price, right? But you could earn your travel and eventually travel for nothing. I mean, would you give me five minutes if I can show you something like that? I mean, guys, that's what we're doing. I've never been done. So congratulations to Nina. By the way, Ashley comes back. She's called, <clears throat> she's like got all kinds of prospects. I mean, she had no idea about a business. She not only goes on the trip and signs up. Now she's trying to tell everyone in the world how great this thing is. So, I mean, one recruit, one trip. Go ahead, Ryan. Two more Mamuda factors here. And she's on and we love you. You know that Mamuda. And, and, and I heard her stories forever. So not only... Do we have um, um, Nina come, who's a part of the team and one of the first people I ever brought to the business. And it literally took her a year to figure it out when the timing was right. Didn't mean she didn't love it, trust it, believe it. It took her one year, you guys. Let's see what happens to Nina's team now that she's absolutely gone on a trip. Another example, uh, we bring my son, Casey. First time we brought Casey to an event. Corey went last year, Casey went this year. He brought his fiance. Well, obviously, Casey's got his own membership. He's he's a partner. So he brought Kelly with him. Well, Kelly's sister and Will, Kelly's sister's husband, well, they're all best friends. They go everywhere together. They travel everywhere together. And Kelly started talking about, wow, we would love to get Will and Ashley to come with us on the next event. Maybe Barcelona in February. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, uh, we start to talk about it. And I'm like, well, the same way that Casey brought you, if you can get a partnership as well, you can bring your sister. Casey can bring Will. And now all four of you, all four of you are going. And I'm instantaneously like, we want to do that. We want to do that. I'm going to give you another Mamuda Mamuda factor only on the flip side. Because it's still the same thought pattern of when people go on the events, 
they come home so excited, they start telling everybody that they know. And we've all seen that happen over this last week. We'll get into that a little bit more, but that, that factor of the events, when you get to an event or you bring someone to an event, it turns the whole thing around. Daryl, I, I jumped in front of you there. I'm going to send it back over to you, my friend. I'm, I'm just uh, soaking it all in. And I'm just so <laughs> thankful, you know, to be involved with this company at this time in history, because we say it all the time, guys, we're just getting started. And whether you get your three in, in a few days or a few weeks, a uh, few months, or even if it took you a year, I mean, the value of this service and this membership is, is unbelievable. So, uh, Todd, the, 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 what you talked about in the beginning, for those of you that want to be successful, guys, it does go back to what Todd talked about. You, you have to read the books. You have to turn the TV off. You can't look at the news. You, you can do all those things. Don't get me wrong. There's entertainment out there, and you need to go to a Raiders game. Uh, my buddy Dean's on here. And you, you need to go to your favorite entertainment. And, yeah, you need to maybe watch some TV. But if you're serious about success – you're going to have to sacrifice some of the things to now to get you where you want to go. You know, successful people do for a short time what unsuccessful people won't do so they can do what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And, and we all come from the same school as how bad do you want it? How serious are you? And, and the one key thing, again, because I know so how many people get excited and they go out and talk to people and sometimes it doesn't happen as fast as it could or should for you and and, and a lot of times that that causes you you know to have doubt in your mind and and you've got to fight that the one thing we've learned is we've had to embrace failures before we embrace success so if you can understand that you're going to fail failure is part of success and if you understand that and you give it time, everybody can do what Ryan's done. Everybody can do what Todd's done. Everybody can do what I've done. We're not anything special other than the fact that we started back in the day. We're still here today. Most people that started with uh, me and Maria way back in the day, I'm talking years ago, decades ago, are not in the industry anymore because they quit for whatever reason. So something about just staying power, something about, you know, doing the do over and over until you win, that's where the game is won. So again, embrace the failures. That's part of the deal. Uh, if you're serious about success, read the books, ask questions. Ryan talked about being on the phone with with Todd, hang out with the people that you want to uh, be around, the, the results that you want to receive. If you do those things long term, everybody here, there's no question about it. We can show anybody how to get to ambassador. There's no question about it. And I, why do I say that? Well, it's 188 left and 188 right, about 376 total people. And you're living a life that most people would just kill for. And guys, that's not a tough team to build. You know, what do I mean by that? If you just got your four and your whole objective was to work with those four to do exactly what you did and you duplicated that like your life depended on it, there's no question about it. Everyone can be there. The reason people don't get there is I think, Todd, is one reason is they get disappointed, you know, because they they didn't, number one, take a trip yet. They haven't taken a trip or two. Uh, they talk to people that don't understand it, that are in a rut in life and they're going to continue to be in there. But once you understand that you can get past that, people are going to say no, people are not going to join, people are going to join and quit. That's just part and parcel of it. Everyone on here right now can be an ambassador. There's no debating it. We have a business that if you focus, no question about it, that will happen for you. And I just want to be that encourager today. You know, stay the course. Uh, you're one way person away. Uh, I'll close it with this. Uh, Jeff Miner just texted me. I said this last week. And uh, he's got a guy signing up here this weekend that has the potential to be that number one income earner, has Absolutely. that type of potential. There's no question about it. And he just said, Daryl, I am so glad that I didn't quit. And there's been times that he's contemplating it. Matter of fact, there was a time a year ago where he did quit and he came back to the company. But he was just so excited because as long as you're putting one foot in front of the other, magic can happen for you. So stay the course, work the business, do the things we talk about, plug in on a consistent basis. And guys, it will happen for you. And guess what? 
The worst thing that's going to happen for you, Todd, is what? What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to go on some unbelievable vacations, right? The absolute worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get some tax write-offs if you work your business like a business, and you're going to go on some unbelievable vacations. Todd, look. look. Ryan, Ryan, you're on mute, buddy. You're on mute, buddy. I'm going to get that video. The background. I feel like you're doing your best read my lips. (laughs) I know. I got to go back to Daryl for a second, because Daryl, I'm just writing down notes as you're talking. And there was a statement we all learned very, very early on in our business when we started. And it was that you are the sum result of the five people that you hang out with the most. You are going to be that sum result. So great stuff in, great stuff out. Terrible stuff in, meaning people with problems and issues and always complaining. Guess what? You become that as well. And the other thing, because I see... I see Ambassador Taylor on here, what she says, and you started out with this, Daryl, stick and stay. You have to stick and stay. Jumping in there, Todd, just thoughts like, as Daryl was talking, this stuff, just all these memory banks just start going. Well, just, and the, the, the one thing that Joe said also that I hope everyone wrote down <clears throat> is that successful people do for a short period of time what unsuccessful people are not willing to do, Right. So again, successful people are willing to do for a short period of time what unsuccessful people are not willing to do, which allows them to do all the things they really want to do. Allows them to do what they want, when they want, with whom they want, right? And Daryl said that at the beginning of his uh, monologue there, um, and that's a a famous quote in our industry. Um, If you've read the books, if you listen to the audios, you hear that one in a lot of different places from a lot of different uh, people. It's one of those things that you guys should be able to write down. You should know it. You should be able to quote it. Um, I mean, you should you know, just know, hey, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going because I know that, man, if I just keep doing this for a short period of time, right, eventually I'm going to be the one that gets to do whatever I want, when I want, with whom I want. For other people where maybe they're not willing to pay that extra sacrifice, yeah. they're not willing to do a little bit before they go to work, a little bit maybe during lunch, a little bit when they come home from work, right? Well, they're going to be destined to doing the same thing over and over and over again for the rest of their life, you know, having to go, we wake up and go to the job and, I'm not trying to beat them up. I'm just saying that, again, sometimes that little bit of discipline today can pay off in a huge way tomorrow because it's going to give you all kinds of new opportunities, new freedoms. And I just thought that was an incredible uh, quotable, not to mention what you said, Ryan. Obviously, you know, you got to stick and stay, as Ambassador Deborah Taylor always says, uh, stick and stay is a big part of it. I want to go back to something that Daryl said, too, which is, guys, when you look at our company, uh, we got started back in 2013. So the company starts in March of 2013. Gene and I joined in June of 2013. So we're in our 10th year. Now, it sounds great that we're in our 10th year, and it is. It tells you that the company's got staying power. Most companies don't make it past two years, let alone five years. We're in our 10th year. All kinds of things have happened to this company along the way. Uh, I mean, people, you know, just you know, stolen money and people didn't deliver technology. I mean, you know, I mean, things have happened, and yet Dave Hart's company's here thriving. So Knowing the company's 10 year old, 10 years old tells you, man, I can count on these guys. They're not going anywhere. They're not some newbie on the street. They know how to run a business. They know how to survive a pandemic as a travel company. In fact, they actually doubled in size during the pandemic. I mean, so it tells you that you've got incredible leadership, a company that's going to stick around that pays people on time every time. Uh, they got a corporate presence now in Colombia and Madrid, Spain. They're fully licensed and all that kind of stuff as a travel agency in California and all throughout Europe. These guys know what they're doing. And so, yeah, it's great to know that you got that longevity of 10 years. But understand that the beginning of the entire company, the, the, we've always had travel. Travel's always been part of the company offering. But initially, they were more of a mobile app, helping people save money. Walmart, PetSmart, Kmart, Target, you know, buy one sandwich, get one free, half price oil changes. And it was great. But then that model shifted. If you look at Groupon today, it's one-tenth the size today as it was even just seven years ago. Living Social, are they even around anymore? Amazon, Amazon wins at everything. Amazon had a daily deal site, they shut it down. Google wins at everything. They had a daily deal site, they shut it down. Dave Hart saw the marketplace shifting. And he's like, hey guys, the marketplace is shifting. We need to shift, right? And so, hey, what do we do best? Well, if you go back and you read the company's Facebook page, all the way back to the very origins, you'll see that people were raving about the travel. That's always been the thing that the company did that blew people away. It's right there on the Facebook page, all the way back to the beginning. You can read it. And so travel was this thing that's just been so natural to the company. Well, they don't decide to go be a travel company until 2017. 
Well, then all we have is great prices. It took to 2018 until we even had a free trip incentive. Keep in mind, <clears throat> there's still no points. There's still no getaways or world tours. We just now have a free trip incentive. Well, then we started, you know, getting some more stuff, but you got one point for every dollar. So after 12 months, you had enough points to take maybe one trip. And here's the four places you could go. <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught that. Yeah. One point for every dollar, not two. And after 12 months, maybe you had enough points to go to one of these four places. Today, you're like, wow, you got to be kidding me. You guys were in here during that? Yeah. I mean, that's what it was like in 2018, right? Yeah. I mean, I know it's a totally different thing today. It wasn't until November of 2019 that we figured out the secret sauce. Now, keep in mind, November 2019, four months before the pandemic, that's when we figured out the secret sauce. We were on the world tour with Ambassador Deborah Taylor. Uh, we were in Cancun. And by the way, everyone that was on that world tour, you couldn't apply points. At that point, you could not apply points to go to a world tour. You could apply points to getaways. And we had this world tour that you just had to pay full ticket to go to. I mean, you get the discounted rate, but I mean, there were no points, right? I mean, that didn't even exist yet. We didn't even have that. Again, there were no world tours that you could apply points to until after the pandemic started. I mean, so guys, I'm trying to give you a little timeline here to realize that what we have today is unbelievable and special. I think a lot of you know that. It's brand new. We actually developed the, the, the secret sauce to our program during the pandemic. We doubled in size during the pandemic. That should tell you the entire story. We're a travel company. Pandemic, that should be the kryptonite that brings you to your knees. Instead, the company begins to flourish. Now, during the pandemic, though, we couldn't do what we did at the original world tour um, in Cancun. Why? Because everybody had to wear a mask and everyone was like, yeah, Daryl, hey, hey, good to see you, buddy. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, stay over there. Good to see you, though, right? I mean, you couldn't quite have that connection. It wasn't like today when people show up and they're hugging and hanging out and singing karaoke. <laughs> I mean, it's a totally, you know, we're at the swim up bar. I mean, all of that stuff, right? Only now are we back to the original thing that we discovered in November of 2019. It's taken till now. And so guys, we are a company that's less than a year old. All right. We are less than a year old. The top income earners have not joined the company yet. Unequivocally, we are just getting started. And that's why you hear me tell that story about Starbucks so often. They were 16 years old and they only had 17 stores. And people are like, well, I'm too late. Hey, yeah, if I was here 16 years ago, there might be opportunity. No, you got 17 stores. They got 55,000 stores, right? They were just getting started. Mm -hmm. McDonald's, it took them 19 years to get to the first franchise. They were just getting started. That's where we sit. And it's important to know where you sit. It's important to know that you are so early that anybody who stays the course just brings some people on vacations. Unbelievable things can happen for you and your family. Well, well Todd, again, you know, we all look back in life and we wish, I mean, I know I've said this a, a thousand times and, and some of you guys can validate this or not on Facebook or inside the, the live Zoom is, man, how many of you would say, man, I wish... I would have known about McDonald's and would have bought a franchise back when it was like five grand when nobody knew about what a Big Mac was or, you know, man, what if I could have got Apple, you know, uh, computer stock back in the day? We've all said that before. I wished I should have, could have. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be able to say that again. You're in a place right now that is Apple at the very genesis. It is Microsoft at the very genesis. It is McDonald's at the very genesis. You just got to put in the time and the effort. So back, I want to show Todd, I got this one, uh, one and a half minute video. I showed it two weeks ago, but this is the type of stuff I watch all the time. And especially when I was growing up in this industry, I would do these type of things over and over just so it would help me stay on course. And if you haven't seen this video, I'll show you where you can actually see it. But this is the type of process everyone goes through. And these are simple things that, you know, Marie and I and Todd and Ryan and and, 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 and um, Deborah Taylor and all the other leaders try to let you guys know there's nothing hard is just if you understand what it's going to take. So many people think in life that you go from point A to point B and it's a straight line. It's not. So again, I watched this video consistently back in the day when it was different. 
I watched it and listened and read it over and over again, Think and Grow Rich, et cetera. And that makes a difference. Check this out again. For some of you, it'll be a repeat, uh, which a good repeat. And for some of you, it'll be the first time. So check this out. This is what it's all about. Imagine a plane taking off and traveling from New York to Los Angeles. Just before takeoff, you adjust the plane just slightly by three degrees or around 80 inches. If you were to keep flying in a straight line, you would end up closer to Tijuana in Mexico than in your intended destination of Los Angeles. And the same goes for our habits. Tiny changes in our habits can change the trajectory of our lives in ways that we can't even notice until many years into the future looking back, in both good ways and bad. You are your habits. The power of atomic habits. A slight change in your daily habits can guide your life to a very different destination. 1% better every day for a year will compound to 37 times better. But 1% worse every day over a year will bring you close to zero. Your habits can compound against you in the form of things like stress or negative self-talk, or they can compound for you in the form of things like knowledge, productivity, skills, and relationships. Success is the product of daily habits, not once-in-a-lifetime transformations. The truth about progress. When you start any endeavor in your life, here is what you think should happen. Linear progress. But here is what actually happens. Notice this section here in the beginning. Small changes in our progress are not even noticeable. James Clear refers to this part of the graph as the valley of disappointment. You've done so much, you've put in so much effort, and you can barely see any results. This is where most people fail and slip back into their old routines. The most powerful outcomes of any compounding process are delayed, so patience is required. Goals versus systems. Forget about goals, focus on systems instead. A goal is the result you want to accomplish. Systems deal with processes that lead to the results. The conventional wisdom suggests that the best way to achieve anything we want in life, be it getting into better shape, building a successful business, or spending more time with family, is to set specific, realistic goals. But if you completely ignored your goals and focused only on your systems, would you still succeed? The author of this book argues that you would. Here are some problems with only having goals. Successful and unsuccessful people share the same goals, so therefore the goal cannot be what differentiates winners from losers. Achieving a goal only changes your life for that moment in time. Goals can create an either-or conflict. Either you achieve the goal and succeed, or you don't and you're a failure. Even if you are making progress in the right direction. When you achieve a goal, what do you do after? If your goal was running the local marathon, chances are after completing it, your motivation will quickly fade and you will just slip back into your old routines. Goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. Unbelievable. So, Todd, I watch that video now probably every seven to 10 days. But when I was getting started in the industry, things close to like that, I would watch every day just to focus me so I'd understand when I had those disappointments that I understood that, that was what was part of it. That was part and parcel for success. Most people have a challenge and they quit in the valley of disappointment. That is what makes people have the issues and challenges out there. Unbelievable. I hope that empowers you guys because that's the type of stuff I listen to regularly. Yeah, there's a, a great quote that I got from, I think it came from Dale Calvert. Um, and it, I mean, and I've, I've had this quote for decades. And that quote was that consistent activity does not produce consistent results but consistent activity always produces success now say that again because that's what daryl's whole video is all about that if you focus on goals you may or may not hit the goal but if you focus on the activity you'll eventually hit the direction you want to go you're going to ascend right you're going to continue to get better marry yourself to the process divorce yourself from the result marry yourself to the routine if you get the routine down you might be doing the right things today, but the wrong things are happening. But if you continue to do the routine, you are going to get better. And it's that slight edge principle. You might just get a little bit better. And at first, it doesn't quite show up. But eventually, there's kind of a compound effect that's going to happen. And suddenly, you're going to be so successful. And if you'd focused on the goal, you might be like, well, three months, it hasn't happened. So I give up. Ah, yeah, I tried. I mean, so again, divorce yourself from that. Marry yourself to the process. In our business, the process is 
10 pages of a good book every day, 15 minutes of positive audio every day, talking to three to five people every day. Uh, and, and you just do that over and over and over. And I know that we have Ambassador Deborah Taylor on here right now. So I want to get her in here. Uh, part of the conversation to talk about, man, just stick it, stay, you all, and you'll get your pay. <laughs> so <laughs> there she is. I was actually taking a day off, Todd, but I said, let me throw on something. I was drinking <laughs> my coffee. I was like, oh, because, you know, it's, it's it's real important that we follow, you know, I, I, I am a leader and I always recognize leadership. And so when your leader asks you to do something, you do it. You don't hem it high. You don't, you know, kick your feet. You just do it. You may not understand it. So I threw on my coat, threw on my, I mean, threw on me a top and comb my hair and said, okay, let me get on here. But I hope but, that's a bath. I hope that's a bathrobe because I think that's even better. We've had my mood on these zooms and bathrobes before in pajamas. Exactly. I think it's fantastic, right? You could be at home. I mean, guys, I'm just drinking my coffee. I didn't even know I was going to be on here. It's authentic. It's real. I love yeah. it. <laughs> so, first of all, I just want to say uh, congratulations again to all of you. We did an amazing job in Cancun. It was absolutely wonderful. It was, it was just absolutely wonderful. I hate I'm not going to get to Hawaii because I know it's going to be thebomb.com. And so I'm in the process of, uh, got a, had a lot of downtime. So I was able to really think about uh, the process of we have, have ha are having some phenomenal leaders come into our business. We had a, a young man come in last night that actually used to be in this company. His name is Doc Um a couple of years ago, but he's out of California. So he came in last night. So we are having some amazing um, leaders come in, Pastor um, Summers that you met, uh, Dr. Renee Smith, her husband. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about leadership and, and doing a paradigm shift. And so as we are um, moving in this company, and when I saw David's post, it even solidified for me the importance of leadership, the importance of understanding leadership, the importance of recognizing leadership, and the importance of knowing your leaders, knowing your leaders. And, and I remember um, a guy, I call him the $6 million man, and he used to always tell me, he said, Deborah, those who you start with, you won't end with. And I used to wonder what he meant by that. You know, and so I can look back to the very beginning of my business, and only person that's still there is Pastor Mel. You know, I can look at the beginning, right? And so at every interval, and that's what Trevorium has been going through. Trevorium has been going through a paradigm shift. And as we begin to move and we go through this paradigm shift, one of the things that David is really big about and you guys are really big about is serving leadership. And so what, and, and, and so am I. And so I'm looking for serving leadership. And so as I'm praying about this, God gave me a couple of things. One, he says, look for the executor. Who is the executor on your team? Who is the person who can strategically show you how to execute? Because you know, if you're a good leader, you know you don't have all the skills. You know what I'm saying? You gotta look, you gotta know. I've always been a leader in anything that I did, and I hired to my weakness, right? So I know my weaknesses. So if you don't know your weaknesses, you can't execute. So I find I found a couple of people who are strategic executors. The next thing that you want to find is a person that that has a, a humanity, like they, they're the person who really kind of care about people. And, and for those who are what we call reds versus greens versus yellow, we're going to do a training on that. You want to make sure that you got somebody that um, can say, OK, well, maybe we should uh, do it like that. Or maybe, um, you know, you said could have said that or maybe, you you know, that value and that you trust. And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to have a person that has uh, the ability to have a global mindset, right? The ability to look beyond um, the, their neighborhood, but look into nations, right? And so you're looking at people like that. You're looking for the person who, the people who are um, innovators, right? Are they innovators on your team? And so you want to have all those type of people on your team because as your team evolves, you're going to need more. You know, so what I'm getting ready to do is do some new things. I'm recreating um, the, the team. I'm recreating some of the, um, the, the way I do Zooms. Uh, we're going to add a Zoom. We're going to add a Monday night. We're going to start some faith leader Zoom, uh, Zoom um, for, our, for our particular team. And anybody's welcome to come. But I'm, I'm saying that I got all of that in Mexico. Because what 
the last three trainings for me and the three trips that have done for me and being a part of that team was to give me insight that we, we're bigger than the United States. We're really bigger than France. We're really bigger than, you understand what I'm saying? And if you stay in your own small box, and that's the problem. Many of our partners are still in their own small box. You got to get out of your box. And so if you listen to your leaders, if you listen to the people and, and you know, I, I sometimes I, I feel um, I had to, to reevaluate for, for me and I'm talking to partners where I was because I had to tell somebody the other day, I started at the bottom. When I came into this business, I walked away from a team of over 300 people. I left every last one of them in my last business. I came in Trevorium with nothing. Unemployed, wounded, sick husband, all of that. You ain't dealing with any of that. And I still went ambassador. My, my leadership left twice, but I still went ambassador. And it's because of the tenacity of being able to stick and stay and reevaluate re reevaluating literature. Every time somebody leaves, it changes the, the, the it, it changes your team. Every time somebody shifts in their mind and they because if leaders build leaders. So let them be leaders. And uh, so that's what I had to deal with uh, for myself. That's what I learned through the Cancun trip, through the Paris France trip, through the, you know, and then what I thought what you're talking about, I call them tag along. The people who come that you invite, <laughs> you you invite. I tell everybody, bring a tag along, right? I'm not going to bring one because I don't like sleeping with folks, but bring a tag along, <laughs> right? <laughs> I slept with my husband 46 years. It's just hard for me to sleep with even my children, right? But bring a tag along because tag alongs will turn around and become people who will begin involved in this business and really become successful. I'll give you an, one example. We, when we went to Cancun, the very first time, the very first time we got this whole idea for the trips, right? And um, for, for the, uh, the world tour, right? Um, Jennifer, Jennifer Davis, who has the big Davis family, bought her sister along, who was the matriarch of the family. She was emphatic about not joining this business. Every, all the other sisters had joined. Her name is Jean. Everybody was, the, well, she, she wasn't going to do the business and she wasn't joining. After that trip, she joined. But she said, you know, I'm not going to build anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go on these trips. She just went one star director. And now she's going to go two star director. You see what I'm saying? She came in with the mindset that I'm not going to do nothing. And she is one of the, I mean, she's a senior like me, but she's a woman is a, has a phenomenal mind. And I'm like, I kept praying. I was like, uh-uh, that, that's not going to sit well because she's a leader. And leaders cannot sit back and not create movement. And so now she's a one star friend to be a two star director. And I'm very proud of that because she was one of the tag alongs, <laughs> you know? And that just proves the power of our business, the power of execution. And the last thing that I would say for me, you know, my family had a wonderful time. You met Miss Ava, right? Uh, Ava, Ava just enjoyed herself. She wanted to go to the real beach and I thought she was going to shrink because she stayed in the water so long. Uh, but the, the, the power of that was we gave them and gave my children and my family an experience uh, that they needed, right? They, that they really needed. And um, because we didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew what God had said. When we got home on our way home, my granddaughter's little brother, who's 20, has been in a fatal car accident and has lost his life. And so we had to come home and deal with that. But what if we had not taken that week and a half vacation? All of our minds would have been just like, right? But because of Trevorium, I could get her, she could get on a plane executedly fast from Mexico to Milwaukee. My daughter's on her way to Milwaukee tomorrow. I mean, it could, it could happen fast because we have Trevorium. And so I'm saying that even in tragedy, God still is gonna show up and uh, through Trevorium, and it's going to bless this business. I love you, Mahmoud. I'm fit to get off of here. But I just wanted to say that. So for me, leadership, dealing with leadership, me, take a tag along because they, they can change the, the, to, to, um, change the direction of your business. And three, you spend time with your family, live your best life, and live it to the fullest because you never know what's going to happen. God bless. 
And boy, for everyone out there, we've talked about facts, tell, story, sell. Um, the story that I hear that has inspired more people in our company than any other person is Coach D, Ambassador Deborah Taylor. People have heard her story, uh, heard the struggle, you know, being, you know, in her, her 60s and being unemployed. And her husband was in the intensive care unit um, and, and getting involved in the company, um, having a leader quit and try to take her team, then had another leader quit and try to take her team. And then obviously, you know, guy, uh, he, he passed away and went to be with the Lord. Um, and I mean, just kind of thing after thing, after thing, after thing, after thing kept happening. And yet she went ambassador, hit it on Christmas day. You just can't make that stuff up. I and mean, it sounds like a, a, a <laughs> Disney movie, but she did it. He actually jumped on Christmas day. And of course then, you know, the money that, the, you know, because, you know, when guy passed away, Deborah was a three-star and guy was a two-star, but the, the check for guy kept coming in week after week, month after month. And a lot of people are like, really? You keep getting paid even after he, he was gone to be with the Lord? I mean, people didn't realize that, that, that this is residual income. And then, of course, Deborah goes on to be an ambassador, six-figure earner, but then Guy goes to be a three-star, and he's getting pretty close to being four-star. And so, I mean, and the, the check keeps coming in. Of course, then Deborah has left that to the grandkids. And so we got to meet the heiress of Trevorian <laughs> uh, in, uh, in Cancun. I mean, how cool to be introduced as an heiress, right? I mean, this has got a nice ring to it, right? But it does. It'll, it'll affect the mindset, too. I'm an heiress. I mean, it'll affect it. I mean, I am an heiress. I'm going to inherit something. I mean, she, how old the hell does a Ava? Four? Four. She just turned four. Imagine you know, she got, her she, birthday. Yeah. So she might take this business over in 14 years, guys. 14 years of that money accumulating, month after month of the check getting bigger. Imagine how that accumulated discipline of Guy and Deborah is going to benefit generations as opposed to accumulated neglect, right? Because that's all success is. A few small disciplines, doing a few of the right things versus doing a few of the wrong things. That's all the stuff in life is. And so she's got one of the most incredible stories that's inspired countless people uh, to understand the power of what we're doing. So again, I know Ryan had a theme of facts, tell, story, sell. If you want a story, it doesn't get any better than Coach D. And so Coach D, thank you for being on here and sharing. God bless you. Now, we've been talking about tag-alongs. We were talking about Nina. We call it the Mahmuda principle. We got to shorten that up. And we call it the, call it the, the, the Moo the uh, Mu effect, the, uh, the Moo technique. Anyway, Miss Mahmuda, how are Hello. you? Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are it's you? It's good to see in your face. Thank you. It's been a while. I know. I know. It's uh, obviously be better I get to hug you again. Uh, but it's I can't good. wait. It's, it's, it's been yeah. Too, yeah, it's been too long. Yes, been too long. So we're talking about this tag along thing. And guys, there's a lot of ways to do the tag along because Deborah says, you know, she likes to have her independence. And I get that. Uh, but if you are fortunate enough to have a significant other, you can do what Ryan did. You can do what Daryl did. You can do what me and Gina did where we each have an account. And so, you know, I have one account that me and Gina can be in. We can use the other account to bring a tag along, to bring somebody. But the person who pioneered that whole concept in our company move was you. And so maybe kind of share how you got started and how it all happened. Right. I joined the company for just the travel. I wasn't interested in the business or anything like that. But it, the inspiration that, that you guys, everybody, especially Coach D, I just want to get to the top. I am so enamored with this company, even through all the things I'm going through at the moment. This company is the backbone for me. It's there. It keeps me motivated and keeps me happy. The first getaway I did, I went to Spain and I went with a friend and she didn't know anything at all about the business. I hadn't spoken to her about it. I just said, I want to go on holiday. My kids are all busy. They don't want to go away with mum. Do you want to come with me? So she said yes. Um, and that was it. We sat together. I showed her all the um, places we could go to. She doesn't like flying. So I said, OK, we'll do a close trip. So we went to Spain, which is only a few hours. Went to Spain in a five-star spa hotel for, I do believe it was 89 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just absolutely out of this world. Again, through the whole trip, I did not speak to her about the business. We did loads of Facebook lives together. So everybody got to know her because they were doing all the lives, but I didn't speak to her about the business. She came back with me and she signed up the next day because she saw the value straight away. So that's Michelle Evans. She loves the business. She, um, we're supposed to be going to um, Budapest in November. 
So I'm going with her this time on her tag along. <laughs> and for countless people, Moo, because I know you've repeated that story a few times. I mean, Miss Nina did it. I see Nina out there, by the way. Hi, Miss Nina. We love you. Uh, Miss Nina invited Ashley, her cousin. Of course, it wasn't some kind of a, she said, hey, you want to go with me to Cancun? Uh, I mean, guys, how many of you, hey, you want to go with me to Paris, or Cancun, anybody, anybody, right? I mean, just go on vacation. Uh, and obviously that can lead to people like, wow, this is unbelievable. You're here for how much? And of course, I know part of your story was when you guys first got to the resort, it was really, really nice. Yeah. And she's like, okay, this can't be the right place. Cause she knew how much you paid that this, yeah. this can't be the right place. And so Mahmouda goes to the counter. She's like, I'm going to stand over here. <laughs> because With the suitcases sure. so she can do a runner. <laughs> yeah. She's pretty sure that no, 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 <laughs> this is not the right, but no, but it was the right place. And so funny story. It was amazing. So, it was absolutely beautiful spa. Hood, and I do like my spas and I do like my luxuries. Yes. So if you want to go on luxury holidays, this is where you need to be. For those who know Mamuda, she does not camp. She does not glamp. She only no. goes to spa resorts. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Bit of a Mama, stop. <laughs> thank you for coming on and sharing your story. No worries. Thanks for having me. All right. Under the theme of facts, tell stories, sell, we're going to bring on Jeff and Heather Trayfoot. And, you know, one principle that I have subscribed to a good part of my life um, is the fact that sometimes the worst, best thing that ever happens to you happens in the exact same moment. Sometimes what appeared to be the worst thing that could happen today, and you're really mad, you're upset, you're bent out of shape, then if you just kind of let some time go by, you'll look back and say, wow, you know what, if that had not happened, um, the blessings wouldn't have happened. And that ended up being one of the best things that ever happened to me. Um, and one of the things that my wife has had to teach me um, is that you have to kind of surrender, and it's in God's timing. Um, so a lot of you might be out there and you want this and you want that. Sometimes God knows maybe you're not ready yet. Maybe you need to learn a few disciplines yet. Maybe if we give you too much success too quickly. Uh, and maybe, you know, so again, sometimes you got to just let go and let God. And sometimes things happen in God's timing. Um, and I can give you countless, countless stories where that's the case. But I want to get to Jeff and Heather. Because uh, Jeff and Heather were supposed to come to Cancun with us. And we're all, I mean, we were, you know, in fact, I called them up the day before. my like, guys. <laughs> We're going to be in Cancun. Well, you know, are you bringing the screwball? <laughs> so we're, I, mean, I literally called up and asked him that question. And Jess, when Jeff, he's like, you didn't know? I'm like, no, what? He's like, my passport didn't come through. I, I didn't get it. I mean, we tried to get it in time and we, we didn't get it. And I'm like, oh, crap, Jeff, you're kidding me. And so, I mean, what seemed to be a bummer, I mean, the, the balloon, the air is going out of the balloon, right? I mean, let's lick our wounds. And I mean, how... I mean, you could do the woes are me and this sucks. And how come this always happens to me? And I mean, they could do all of that, but they didn't. They didn't. Instead, Jeff says, you know what? We got this incredible membership. We can't go to Cancun. You know what? Though? We can go to San Diego. <laughs> and so they decided to go to San Diego and have an incredible time. And Jeff and Heather, I'll let you guys take over the story from here. Oh, man, it, it, it was unreal. I mean, to go from being down and depressed to saying after talking to Ryan and we're like, you know what, we're going to do it. So we booked everything, went to San Diego and we spent eight days. Um, in fact, the picture behind me is one of the sunsets from the beach and it was wow. eight days. And all we did was just trade it in our points. And the story that gets really good is while we were out there, we had another close friend of ours, we had another close personal friend of ours that they were supposed to be in Florida taking the family to Disney World. Well, as we all know, Mother Nature had other ideas. So lo and behold, last minute, they changed their plans and they were out in San Diego, literally two miles from where we were staying. And we were talking. I'd be sending them pictures and videos of the beach, food, lots of uh, alcoholic beverages that we had. Because he, he said, keep sending them because I'm with my family and I'm enjoying seeing all these pictures you're sending. So I was like, OK, so we kept doing it, kept doing it. And then they had to they had to go home early because their family got sick. So they left a day early. And Heather and I were sitting at the airport in San Diego, not wanting to go back home. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to ask Chris when we get home. I'm going to ask them. I just want to kind of see the numbers, see what they spent versus, you know, what we get with Trevorium. 
They were staying at the Hyatt Regency in Mission Bay, four star on the water. And I was like, Chris, wh what did that cost you? Because I'd already done my homework in our back office. He said, Jeff, we spent $450 a night for that room. We had it in the back office for $230. It's $220 a night for the six or seven days they were there. And um, then he said, man, what did we had a rental car that we booked in our back office. $180 with the insurance for our time out there. He said, really? He said, you want to know how much it cost us? I said, please, how much did it cost you? Over $1,100 they spent on their rental car. So you take the rental car and the hotel and you see how much money they were spending versus what they could have saved. Long story short, he was on the phone with Todd yesterday for about an hour and he'll, he'll be coming on board in the family here probably this weekend. And it's, it's like Ryan says, Facts tell, stories sell. And this story, while it started out sad, my phone had been ringing off the hook. I had to give Todd Strand his own caller ID to him because he'll call me up. Hey, I got a Zoom here. They can't, you can't hear them, but they can hear you. Can you tell the story? No problem. We're sitting there last night. I'm winding down after all the phone calls yesterday. And about 1130, finishing up. <laughs> Finish up a nice glass of whiskey before bed. And I get a text and I'm like, dang, here we go again. And I look over and who is it? It's Michael Jordan himself. I get a text <laughs> from Daryl Roberts. Hey, if, I, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're awake or not right now. If not, get with me in the morning. I looked over at Heather. I'm like, well, I was tired. Now I'm wide awake. So instantly called Daryl. And he, he saw my Facebook live that I, Two minute video from my balcony when we got home. Mind you, it's been seen by about 194 people now. But he said, I, I love the story. He goes, If you can condense it down for me just a little, he goes, um, It's something I think we might be able to use. And he may kill me because I think he didn't want me to say anything. But when Michael Jordan himself asked if you can do something, you do it. And that's what I'm going to leave it at. I just wanted to say, I mean, because he told the entire story. What what I like is the details of the actual trip that we took. Because this was our first trip with Trevorium. We see what everybody posts in the group. We see these fantastic places between Coach D, Daryl, Ryan, Todd, um, Danny, um, there's another guy that traveled. What, what was he on his 29th Trevorium trip at this Kyle. point? All, yeah, all of those pictures, you see all these beautiful places. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I'm not a California girl. I've never liked California. I was not interested. After Cancun, I was so down of not going. I'm like, really? We're going to go to California of all places. This is going to be awful. And I wasn't really in the mood, but I still followed Sue because, you know, it's my husband. He wants to go and show me around because that's where he's from. So I start going in the back office and looking at these places. And I didn't know San Diego is an old town. I didn't. I had zero clue about its history, its architecture, any of that nature. And when I booked these, one of the beaches, because we made it a, a plan, I would book for half the, the trip and he would book for the other half. So we could kind of hop hotels to see what Trevorium offered. Um, I picked this one and man, Google, Google Earth did not do it justice. It was, it looked run down. It looked old. But when we got there, I was mind blown. Like the views we got, the location of it, the interior of it was updated to the most modern things. Uh, everything was comfortable. They cleaned that place every morning spick and span the staff was amazing the area it was in gave us access to so many places amazing food amazing people we were at one place i forgot we were in california because people were actually nice because when you aren't raised there <laughs> what did she say about you and i ryan was she trying to stories. tell you like something <laughs> <laughs> you guys are an exception to the rule because i know you outside of that but 
when you're raised in Colorado, I mean, even the US wide, California gets a bad name. It always does. And I didn't expect the people to be as nice as they were. And the fact that we do have such awesome resorts in that back office, I'm so excited. We've got so many more planned and just the quality. We found our little hidey hole. That'll be forever. Probably the vacation point where we go. Um, the one he chose, the Hilton, that was uh, on uh, the harbor. That'll be our business go-to for sure. If we just want to get away and just focus on the business, uh, it's a little bit more quiet and not as touristy beachy, but I just want to say that I'm impressed. I'm definitely impressed. Well, guys, there's so many parts to this story. <clears throat> One, we got tragic blessings. What was supposed to be something awful turned into something that was a massive blessing, right? Two, Jeff was down, but what did he do? He called his leader, his mentor. He called Ryan. Ryan said, hey, let's turn adversity into something else. Let's go to San Diego, right? Three, you guys plug in on all the calls. You're on all the training calls, all the calls all the time. You've been watching all the leaders. You've been studying. You've been preparing yourself for this moment. Four, you actually went on the trip. Five, congratulations. It's exciting with Chris and all that kind of stuff. Uh, next, you guys, no longer is this thing just an academic thing where I'm watching Coach D and everybody, but now I have my own personal story, my own personal trip. And so again, there's so many things you can pack uh, from just this one story, but then how it all turned into a massive blessing that sometimes what was supposed to be bad turned into one of the greatest things that ever could have happened to them because obviously uh, it opened Heather to the idea that not all California is bad. It opened Heather to certain new locations, but obviously they got a new partner that could end up, you know, building around the world and doing incredible things. So and with that, I'm going to throw it to you, Ryan, for your thoughts and then uh, take it to Daryl and uh, for his final thoughts. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, and, and this is such a great example, um, as leaders, um, sometimes we got to have a little patience and we just need to give just give our heart to people on our team. And, and Jeff and Heather have been working and, and, and they've been sending out texts and they might not have had the greatest success out of the gate, but it was developing their story. They have a want and a need more than most people just because of what they do for a career and, and they're truck drivers. For those of you that don't know, and we're not going to get into that story today. We'll leave that for another time, but they're on the road, man, in one month, they're on the road, probably, I'm going to say 25 to 28 days a month. Sometimes they're on the road for 45 days before they ever get home. So, and they own a trucking business and they're going separate ways at all times. It's not like they're on the road, stopping at one place, hanging out at night, getting on and going. They're going separate directions all the time. So it's another story for another time. But the one thing I can tell you is they have grown so much over the last five to six months um, they're, they're not only reading a book, they're on the road, listening to books. They're doing podcasts. Heather and Jeff also have now joined a leadership group where they're learning more about themselves and developing leadership skills. And the last part of that is, uh, we've talked about it over and over again, guys, you got to get a story. What's my story? What's my story? We haven't gone on trips. Use the dream trips, watch the dream trips, use everybody else's story until you can go, now they've got a story as well. So it might happen overnight. It might take six months, but back to coach, coach Taylor, stick and stay. You just got to stick and stay. And this was an atomic bomb in their lives. I can promise you that Jeff didn't even want to talk to me for three or four days because he was so bummed out. And at one point I just called him and just checked in with him. And then he told me about, it. I'm like, bro, whatever. Let's just stay in the U.S. right now. Let's figure this thing out. Tragic blessings, as Todd says. Uh, great stories. Everybody on the call today. So glad we got um, Ambassador Taylor here as well, because she's always got a wealth of knowledge. And she always takes it to that to that training level and, and the leadership skills. So great to be here today. Great call. Top of the hour. So Todd, as always, thank you. Everybody on the call today, Mamuda, we love you so much for your stories. Um, I just obviously, Jeff, Heather, I'm going to turn it to the greatest. Michael Jordan, it's done. That name's sticking, isn't it? That name you is now sticking. MJ, you are now man, anointed the Michael MJ. Jordan of our company. Take it away, <laughs> Mr. D.
Also, guys, hey, again, great training, guys. This is where it's at. For those of you that are going to be here a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, you're going to be on these calls telling your story where I was a zero, now I'm a hero. And, and I don't mean that just, I'm talking about just from a business perspective, where you are today and where you will be. But but I, I just wanted to, I asked Jeff and Heather to put the video together. We're going to put it on our travelclubsite.com. This is where we have our testimonial site. And uh, it was just, it was so amazing. And, and if any of you have any stories, get in touch with me. If you have an amazing testimonial, whether it's the business or whether it's the service, let me know. We want to highlight you on that show. But here's the Jeff's video that he sent to me like at 12 o'clock, um, 12, 12 a.m. in the morning uh, last evening or this, this morning, if you will. So real quick, just want to show it's only about 45 seconds. That's how he did that hands-free, Ryan. Hands free, hands free. The video appears. <laughs> I got to figure that one out. That's why, that's why we call him MJ. <laughs> hey guys, we just got back from an amazing eight days in San Diego. And while we were down there, we ran into a friend of ours that happened to be in town at the same time. After discussing and catching up on exactly what our last minute trips cost us, he was staying at the Mission Bay Hyatt Regency for $450 a night. Our back office had the same room for $230. Our rental car for six days cost us $180. Cost them over $1,100. Trevorium could have saved this friend of ours over $900 just in the car rental alone and $1,000 for his hotel stay. Our friend sees the value of Trevorium and will be part of the family very soon. Nice. That's going to be added to uh, travelsite.com. And guys, uh, Jeff, uh, Heather, you guys are superstars and you're on your way. So, so happy for you guys, proud of you guys and uh, way to stick and stay. That's where you win in our business. So I'm excited for these guys and so many other people. And a quick shout out to uh, Carolyn. Um, see if I can just scroll down just a, a little bit. I think I might be able to handle that. Carolyn Walker, she always, I mean, she's typing the whole time, adding mm -hmm. little notes and this and that. And others are doing it as well. But uh, Carolyn, just a, a quick shout out to you. Appreciate the, the notes that you give us and the highs and all those things as well. So Todd, another great uh, weekend here. Let's go make it happen. And we'll see everybody on the Monday or tomorrow night. And then on the Monday call with corporate to get our week started correctly. Yeah, tomorrow night, six o'clock with uh, Ambassador Deborah Taylor, Pastor Mel Keys, the Fireside Chat. Monday night, the corporate update call. In fact, we will be in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, David Hart, Adela Hart, me, Gina. Uh, we're going to be connecting there with uh, Daryl and Maria. That's going to be an incredible week. We'll be in Vegas all week. In fact, we're actually going to the big travel show there. So uh, incredible things are coming out of that. And just one final note. I, I, I meant to make this comment earlier. Notice that last night at 1130 at night, yeah. Daryl Roberts is like, hey, man, can I get your story? I mean, this guy is out there getting the story, getting it on video at midnight, right? At midnight, he's still working on behalf of all of you, getting to put up on the website. Daryl and Maria, absolutely incredible, but that's what leaders do. They burn the mid on oil. They do for a short while what other people are not willing to do so they can live in resorts and visit home. And that's why he's doing that. So with that, guys, love you guys. See you tomorrow night. Till then, God bless. Bye, everybody.